friends so today in this video i am going to teach you a method by which you can find out the approximate root of any given equation and that method is called as newton raphson method now let's say you have been given an equation and that equation is let's say it is quadratic or cubic or some higher degree equation and you want to find out the root of that equation then by using newton raphson method we can get the root of the equation now what is the geometric meaning of it so let's understand it first so let's say this is the x and y axis and let's say we have a curve so i am considering one curve over here so let's say this is the curve and let's say the equation of this curve is y equal to f of x or we'll say that f of x is equal to 0 so the root of the equation is nothing but that the point of intersection of this curve with x axis so wherever this curve cuts the x axis at the point and that point is called as root of that equation or that curve now to get this value we are going to use the algebraic method of newton raphson method but if you want to use the geometric method then it is done by using or by taking the help of tangent so we generally use the method of tangent to get the roots by geometric method but here we are going to use the algebraic method so in algebraic method we will consider one equation f of x so here i'll say let y is equal to f of x is the equation for which we want to find out the root or you can say that f of x is equal to 0 now what is the approach so initially what we do is we consider certain values of x and we find out the values of f of x for each value of x so let's say we are considering one value of x as x1 so we'll find out the value of f of x1 then we'll consider x as x2 some other value of x we'll find out f of x2 and we will observe whether the value of f of x1 is less than 0 and value of x2 is greater than 0 because by newton raphson method we say whenever the value of the given function is less than 0 and greater than 0 then between those two values our root lies so it might possible that you will not get less than 0 and greater than 0 condition in two roots so you have to check the third root as well so you might get here less than 0 again less than 0 and you might get that greater than 0 in third case so we will consider that second and third case because that time the second case will be less than 0 and third case will be greater than 0 so always remember whenever we get the value of function as less than 0 and greater than 0 for two different values our root of that equation lies between those two values next we will consider that value as our initial root and we will start with the formula so the formula is x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus f of xn by f dash of xn now guys whatever is the initial root that we are considering we call it as x0 now that root will be between x2 or x3 or i'll say that for the function or i'll say that when the function is less than 0 and when the function is greater than 0 those two values will be considered as the range and we will take the value of root or the value of initial root as one of the value from both of them so here we'll start with x0 so since we have initial root x0 will consider n as 0 so in this formula we will put n equal to 0 1 2 and so on so when we put n is 0 here we will get x0 minus f of x0 upon f dash of x0 so x0 means the initial root whatever that we are considering 
f of x0 means value of function f of x at that point x0 will put it here and f dash of x0 is nothing but the derivative of this function that is f dash of x and in that f dash of x we will put that root x0 and by doing that we will here get x1 because n is 0 so 0 plus 1 is 1 we will get value of x1 now we will use that value of x1 in the next approximation or in next iteration to get the value of x2 next we will use that value of x2 in next iteration to get the value of x3 and so on so we will continue till we get the two consecutive iterations as same and whenever we get the same value in consecutive iteration we stop and we call as that is the root of our equation now to understand this method let's take one example so here we have to compute the real root of the equation x log x to the base 10 minus 1.2 is equal to 0 correct up to 3 decimal places using newton refson method so let's start so here what we'll do is here we will say let f of x is equal to x log of x to the base 10 minus 1.2 now we'll find out the range between which our root lies and for that we have to take different values of x so first of all i'll consider value of x as 1 so i'll find out f of 1 it will be 1 log of 1 to the base 10 minus 1.2 then I'll consider x as 2. We'll find out 2 log of 2 to the base 10 minus 1.2. Now, if you'll check these two values in calculator, then here you'll get minus 1.2, and here you'll get minus 0 0.5979. It means we are getting both values less than 0. So, as I said you in the steps that whenever we are getting consecutive values less than 0 or greater than 0 will not accept it so it means we want one value should be less than 0 and one value should be greater than 0 so hence i'll find out the next value that is for x equal to 3 so here we will get 3 log of 3 to the base 10 minus 1.2 is equal to and if you will check this value in calcium, you will get 0 0.2313 which is greater than 0. And now guys you can see that the value of f of x is greater than 0 for x equal to 3 and less than 0 for x equal to 2. So here I can say since f of x changes the sign from negative positive as x goes from 2 to 3 there is root between 2 and 3 so guys our root lies between 2 and 3 now to get that root we will use the newton raphson method so we know the formula of newton raphson method i'll show you here so this is the formula now if you want to use this formula then we have to find out the values of f of xn f dash of xn and so on also we have to consider the initial root x0 now if you'll see here then here we got the two values of x now which value we should consider as x0 so if you will observe carefully then these are the values of function now if you will see then this value 0 0.2313 is closer to 0 if you draw it on the number line then 0 0.2313 will be here whereas minus 0 0.5979 will be somewhere here so since this is more closer to x equal to 0 we will consider our x as 3 and i will say x0 is equal to 3 so now i will say therefore x0 is equal to 3 now let's find out the value of f of xn so f of x we have this so f of xn will be xn log of xn to the base 10 minus 1.2 here i'll write xn 
माइनस सॉरी इन टू लॉग ऑफ एक्स एन टू दी बेस टेन माइनस वन पॉइंट टू नेक्स्ट वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स एन नाउ टू फाइंड आउट दी एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स एन वी हैव टू टेक डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस एफ ऑफ एक्स एन एंड फॉर दैट वॉट विल डू इज विल कंसिडर दिस लॉक टर्म in base e form then only we can find out the derivative so here i'll say it is xn into log of xn upon log of 10 to the base e minus 1.2 and now we'll find out the derivative in this case so this is our f of x and now we'll find out the f dash of xn so this is just f of xn so this is uv rule we will get the derivative of xn as 1 and this term as it is so this term is nothing but log of xn to the base 10 plus xn as it is and derivative of this term is 1 upon log of 10 to the base e as it is and log of xn will give us 1 upon xn that is here minus derivative of this term is 0 now we can cancel this xn and xn so we will get log of xn to the base 10 and here we can say that it is plus log of 10 to the base e inverse so this is the value of f dash of xn now now If you'll calculate this value in the calculator, then you will get value as zero point forty four three. So I'll say here it is log of x n to the base ten plus zero point four three four three, and this is the value of f dash of x n. Now we got f value of f of x n, f dash of x n. Now we'll say by Newton Raphson method. x n plus one is equal to x n minus f of x n upon f dash of x n. So this will give us x n minus. Now value of f of x n is this, that is x n log x n to the base ten minus one point two. So x n log of x n to the base ten minus one point two whole upon f dash of x n. That is this value. So log of xn to the base 10 plus 0.4343 and now we'll put the value of n as 0 1 2 and so on so let's start so here i'll say when n is equal to 0 we will get x1 as x0 minus x0 log of x0 to the base 10 minus 1.2 upon log of x0 to the base 10 plus 0.4343 and we have considered the value of x0 as 3 so now we'll substitute x0 as 3 so we will get 3 minus 3 log 3 to the base 10 minus 1.2 Whole upon log of three to the base ten plus zero point four three four three. Now, if you'll put these values in calculator, then you'll get answer as zero point four three four six one five. Now, this is the value of x one, or this is our new root. Now, we will use this value of x one in the next. iteration so for that i'll put n equal to 1 so this will become x2 so here i'll say therefore x2 is equal to x1 minus x1 log of x1 to the base 10 minus 1.2 whole upon log of x1 to the base 10 plus 0.4343 Now here at x1 we will put the value 2.74615, and if you calculate this in calculator, then you will get 
2.7406 as the value of x2 now again we will use this value of x2 in next iteration so we'll find out x3 so x3 will be x2 minus x2 log of x2 to the base 10 minus 1.2 upon log of x2 to the base 10 plus 0 0.4343 now here we will put this value of x2 that is 2.7406 and if you will calculate this in calculator then you will find that the value of x3 is also 2.7406. It means the value of x2 and x3 is same. So whenever value of x is same in consecutive iteration that time we stop and we say this is the root. So here I will say the root of the given equation is 2.7406. Now guys, if you want to verify whether your root is right or wrong, then what you can do is you can take this value of x, resubstitute it in the question and you will find that this value of this function will be 0. And if you get it as 0, then your root is right. Thank you.